Hey, it's TJ here, and today we're going to be talking about a show from Nickelodeon's glory years, and a show that kids at the time all across the US and even the world wanted to be part of, Nickelodeon Guts. While the show was filmed before I was even alive, I used to watch it a lot on Nickelodeon's game show network, Nick Games and Sport, or GAS, that would play reruns of all the old Nickelodeon game shows. So if you have it, we're going to talk about the history and dive into one of my favorite game shows of all time, Guts. Nickelodeon Guts, or as it was later known as Global Guts, and even an offshoot called My Family's Got Guts, was an action game show that ran for four seasons and was inspired by American Gladiators, an action game show that pitted adults against each other in athletic challenges. Much like American Gladiators, Guts was an action game show that had young athletes, usually three per episode, competing against each other in four extreme versions of athletic events. And it would all culminate in the fifth round where they would race up a fake mountain to hopefully get enough points to win that episode. All the iterations of Guts were filmed at Universal Studios Florida, but not in Nickelodeon Studios. They were filmed in Soundstage 21, called the Extreme Arena, with the exception of My Family's Got Guts. Nickelodeon Guts first aired on September 19, 1992 on Nickelodeon, and was hosted by Mike O'Malley and officiated by Moira Kirk, also known as Mo. The series would run for three seasons until 1995, where it was renamed as Global Guts, which I will talk about later in this video. The show would start with three kids, most often pulled from local schools, who would come out to an announcement by O'Malley, who would also give them a nickname. Each contestant would represent either the blue, red, or purple teams. Each event would be worth points, with 300 being awarded to first place, 200 to second, and a third place getting 100 points. Between events, each contestant would have their Spill Your Guts segment. So Rebecca, spill your guts! Which in season one meant Mike O'Malley would tell everyone the contestants' athletic and non-athletic hobbies. In season two meant Mo would talk about the contestants' interest in what guts meant to them. Ty, mouth of the South, Mathan is an 11-year-old soccer and basketball star. When Ty isn't mouthing off to the refs, hmm, he's talking his friends' ears off. For the mouth, guts equals fame. And in season three, the contestants themselves would have a pre-recorded bit where they'd introduce themselves and talk about their interests and what guts meant to them. Hi, my name is Brian Beer. I'm 13 years old, and I played for the Bell Middle School basketball team. I just finished with the Bell All Stars, which we did very well in, and I'm now starting football season. In Global Guts, speakers who did not speak English would speak in their native language and have a translator dubbed over them. Hello, my name is Kostya Nikita, and I'm from Alma Alda, Kazakhstan. There were many different events, all usually modeled after sports with extreme elements, with some being introduced in later seasons. I'd like to take a moment to briefly talk about the events that were featured. Most of the games utilized an elastic harness for aerial movements. These games included bullseye, slam dunk, spirals, off the wall, spike it, over the top, jump jump, make your mark, the longest yard, Rebound, Jump Ball, Attack, Fumble, Rugby, Zero G, Touchdown, Peak to Peak, Slam a Jamma, Dodge It, Triple Jump, Double Play, Shootout, and Sky Ball. Other events included basic training or an obstacle course, which was one of the most frequent events on the show. This would entail contestants going through a six station obstacle course and in Global Guts, seven station. The game was unique because the contestants were not allowed to watch the other contestants go through it. Missing an obstacle would be a disqualification. A variation of this was called Extreme Baseball, introduced in 1994 and replaced the obstacle course, which was very like basic training, except this game took on a baseball theme, with the obstacles being in a diamond formation and following a base path. Other games used the track, like Moon Race, using Nickelodeon's Moon Shoes, Wild Wheels, Eat My Dust, Blade Runners, Mad Max, and Tornado Run. Tornado Run being the only event that caused an injury that forced a player to sit out for the rest of the game. This happened during Global Guts, and that player was replaced by another player from those nations. There was also a pool that was used for events like Invisible Boat. We don't have any boats. Add Greg off there into the water now. It is Boogie Down, Whitewater, Totally Tubular, Splashdown, Hang 10, Wave Runner, Power Ski, and Skurfin Safari. The field would play host to Free Kick, Wild Pitch, Aces, slap shot, and Blast It. And finally, there was a ski slope, I believe debuting in 1994, that had events like Vertiboggin, Spin Out, and The Edge. In all honesty, it's extremely impressive, at least to me, that a show that only had four seasons was able to have so many original games that were played, which I think kept the episodes unique, 
fun and original every time. I can see why the show was so popular and why even today people enjoy watching it. I know I enjoyed it every time I watched it on Nick Gas and I never really got tired of it. The last and final event was the Aggro Crag, which was renamed later down the line to the Mega Crag and finally the Super Aggro Crag. This event involved contestants climbing up a fake mountain and hitting targets. It started with six targets, then moving to seven in the later part of the first season. This would then be moved to eight targets from season two to the end of the show. Contestants would have to hit them in order, avoid falling rocks, and deal with the stresses of simulated lightning storms, snow that was actually glitter and confetti, and what were called nuclear flying crystals. The contestants would also be bound to their own path up the mountain and could be disqualified if they crossed into another player's path. Other ways to be disqualified and given third place automatically included hitting someone else's targets, false starts, climbing up the mountain without hitting any of the targets, and not stepping on the boulders in Boulder Canyon. The person who finished first here was given 725 points, second netted you 550, and third was 375. It said these numbers were picked because it would make it almost impossible for a tie to happen. To get a perfect score for Guts was 1,925 points, meaning that contestant won every single event including the aggro crag. The winner of the episode was given a quote, piece of the aggro crag, and sorry to destroy some of the people's childhoods with this, but the actual mountain was made out of foam and particle board, meaning that the contestants were not actually given a piece of the aggro crag, but actually a trophy that lit up and had their name and episode number on a plate. Everyone would get a medal, with the first getting gold, second silver, and third bronze, all modeled after the Guts logo. Now, I also promised that I'd talk about Global Guts. They've come from all over the world with one goal, a glowing piece of our radical rock. But one question still remains. Do you have it? or the final season of the original run of Guts. Most of the show's structure was the same, except for some key differences. Global Guts pitted kids and teens from around the world against each other in a season-long scoreboard of medals, kind of like the Olympics. Also, as an interesting note, because I love E.T., he was a special guest during this season. E.T.'s got the medals. Greetings, special Olympians. And to kids all over the world. In Global Guts, teams are split into the USA, Mexico, Great Britain, Israel, Germany, Spain, Portugal, and what was called the Commonwealth of Independent States, or CIS on air, which was the countries of Georgia, Kazakhstan, Russia, and Ukraine. Other than the Special Olympics episode, no country was represented twice in the same episode. The aggro crag was called the super aggro crag, and in spill your guts segments, if the contestants were not speaking English, a translator would voice over them. Other key differences included flag raisings, national anthems of the gold medal winner, and a victory lap of all three after the games. And finally, commentary in the nation's represented languages, and airings in Germany, Israel, Mexico, Portugal, Russia, Spain, Ukraine, the United Kingdom, Brazil, and Indonesia. 1994 also saw a video game based on the series, which was exclusive to the Super NES. In all honesty, the game doesn't look that bad for its time, but was criticized by some for its poor controls. Despite its popularity and originality, the show was cancelled and its last new episode aired on December 10th, 1995. The show, even after being cancelled, would be run as reruns on Nick's main channel from 1996 to 1999, then being a part of regular programming on the Nick Games and Sports or Gas Network from 1999 until the channel itself was discontinued in 2007 for most, 2009 for Dish Network. After that, the show would run reruns on the Nick Splat block from 2011, then Pluto TV picked it up in 2019 with the Nick Games channel, which was then removed a year later. As of now, the show airs as part of the Nick Games block on Pluto TV's channel, No Parents Allowed. During all this in 2008, almost 13 years since the original show went off the air, a reboot was born in My Family's Got Guts.
My Family's Got Guts was filmed in another soundstage, but it was still at Universal Studios Florida, and was the first and only Nickelodeon production to be produced at Universal Studios Florida since Nickelodeon Studios closed in 2005. My Family's Got Guts was different from the original run as firstly, it was hosted by Ben Lyons and Asha Curtin instead of O'Malley and Moe. And it was a tournament style show with 12 teams starting the season being narrowed down to three over the season with the last three competing in an hour long aggro bowl each preliminary round would have two games and the aggro crag and the points didn't determine the winner points were used to give a tenth of a second head start for every point the team had over another team with a maximum head start of 10 seconds the events and the games were a bit more limited with there only being 12 games instead of the over 30 in the original Guts run. An interesting note about My Family's Got Guts is the fact it had two seasons, but allegedly only season one was aired in North America. I was able to confirm that season two was aired in Australia. And that brings us to the end. The Guts series last aired a new episode in the US in 2008, and since then all we have seen are replays. From an outsider looking in, Nickelodeon Guts was a great example of the culture of the 90s in the US and a key part of Nickelodeon's golden age. It was certainly loved, and it would be interesting to see if the show idea or a show like it ever comes back. I'd love to hear your input. Did you watch Guts? Do you remember it from its time on Nick Gas? What was your favorite memory from Nickelodeon's glory years? Finally, one last question. Do you have it? On the schoolyards and playgrounds, they came. The athletes of Nickelodeon Guts. Tough, yeah. Competitive, sure. But when it's all over, they shake hands and say, Hi, Mom. Don't miss the athletes of Guts when they go head-to-head -head on Nickelodeon Guts. Every weekend at 6.35, 30 Central on the First Kids Network. Guts.